Hello guys. Photos from the trenches impress me the most. Even though trenches are made to save human lives, they very much resemble graves, long corridors in soil walls. And Ukrainian soldiers spend months in such trenches, eating, sleeping, dreaming, sometimes dying. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support my country, please subscribe and help us fight informational war. And my longtime subscribers, you know, trolls are around, so please check your subscription status and hit notification button. And I'm super grateful for your likes, shares and comments. I have decided to take you out in a beautiful park. The weather is unusually warm and let's use this opportunity to have a better background because I'm going to speak about tough topics. Today I have read a very useful article of General Zaluzhny and I have to start with a confession. I very much respect people who do not talk much. Sounds weird taking into account that I talk every day with you, but I think that those responsible for the defense of the country, for the development of military tactics and strategies, those who know some important intelligence secrets should not talk much, and General Zaluzhny is the one. His last interview for the wide international audience was in December 2022 and now he spoke with The Economist and described the state of Russian war in Ukraine right now, Ukrainian counter-offensive, his fears and perspectives. When he gave this interview back in 2022, he was warning the world that Russia is prepared to attack Kyiv for the second time. In 2023, we see they failed to do so, and this is one more success of Ukrainian counteroffensive. And remember to like and subscribe, because Kyiv is the capital of Ukraine, free and very strong country. So, also the things that he focuses his attention on are a bit different if we look um, in the development of counteroffensive. At the moment, and this is actually extremely important to understand, the war reached its positional combat phase, which can be translated into normal, ordinary human language as war on exhaustion. And this is what we don't want. Well, first of all, because this means long war. Secondly, um, this will be a problem for Ukraine because we are a smaller country in comparison to Russia in population. At best, we have like 38 million people and Russia has 140 million people. And of course, we differ greatly in the way we treat human life. We do not send our soldiers into meat grinders and Russians are ready to substitute thousands and to sacrifice thousands for a minor success. For example, Zaluzhny told that they spent 10 months and perhaps 10,000 soldiers on Bakhmut, which is six by six kilometers city. Something similar we see now close to Avdiivka, and most vloggers describe it as meat waves. A very ugly, but at the same time, a very concrete, vivid description of how Russia fights this war. But if we continue in this tempo, it will be difficult both for Ukraine and for the Allies. And Russia wants it. Why? Because any pauses, any frozen stage or positional war is a chance for them to regain their powers and to continue construction. They have lots of old Soviet military factories that they started renovating and where they can produce missiles, artillery and other things that they need. And if they don't have shocking problems on the front lines, they are able to develop and to build up their supply. This is something that we don't want. What Zaluzhny says, what is important for faster Ukrainian victory and normality returning back to this world? Well, first of all, we desperately need aviation. No NATO country would start counter-offensive without the support from the skies. We did not have other choice and taking this extremely important argument into account, I'd say Ukrainian counter-offensive is super successful. 
but at the moment we need these planes we need these jets we need these bombers because they can cover lots of operations of infantry they can protect them from artillery fires and most of the war looks like that at the moment also long-range missiles that will help us target russian artillery and clear the way for ukrainian defenders so thing that we so much need our F-16. I know we talked a lot about them, but they are still on the way. Pilots are still training. It takes really long. It takes human lives. It takes Ukrainian territories. It takes um, attention and belief of people worldwide. So I hope soon we will be able to update you on something better. And also this is an illustration that at the beginning of this war, the world doubted we will make it and did not uh, hurry with the supply of Ukrainians. Also, we very much need radio electronic devices that help stop Russian drones as they build a lot of them. They have allies in Iran, they have allies in China. They supply them with drones and to stop them, to prevent their attacks, we need radio electronic um, defense. And uh, also counter battery um, weapons that are used to stop infantry and stop artillery because 60-80% of the battles look like that at the moment. Um, also, I'd say that mobilization is also a problem because uh, people who are on the front lines, people who are soldiers, people who are in the trenches, these are people who had totally different lives before and we have to remember that. These are not all professional soldiers who possess the necessary traits of character, who were trained and who liked this kind of life. Now Ukrainian armed forces are people from totally different backgrounds, with totally different personal health stories, histories and so on. Uh, so mobilization is another priority and demining because Russians are mining Ukraine as crazy and this is one more illustration that they don't need the country they don't need the territory they don't need the resources they simply want to destroy an example of a successful democracy near authoritarian Russia for example Zaluzhny states there are minefields that are 20 kilometers long imagine that ukrainian soldiers are demining the territories russians see that and often mine them back which causes lots of troubles and lots of useless efforts that's why we need demining technologies and we also need um, smoke curtains i don't know how to describe this uh, correctly to help and uh like protect Ukrainian deminers and so that Russian enemies do not see we are demining that. And he is also very glad that we are successful at destroying Russian logistics and um, spoiling their supply chains. And um, perhaps one of the most important messages that I see in this article is that we have to avoid this exhaustion war because this will mean lots of problems for the world and for Ukraine and that's exactly what Russia wants. We don't have to give it what it wants. Subscribe if you agree with me. Also, um, we uh, need to use technologies. This is what helps. That's why we continue asking for F-16 Atacams. And believe me, I do have this feeling that if we had all of that, I mean, the, the, as many as we need, we would be able to clean our territory from orcs really, really uh, quickly. And the most important message for me personally as a Ukrainian, remember, at the beginning of this war, many people in democratic countries believed it is possible to stop Russia with sanctions. They will be exhausted. A country that loses 300,000 soldiers on the battlefields will definitely retreat. But Russians have a very different doom mindset where sacrifice and degradation is a part of their daily life. So things that are awful for us, that are awful for you, things that would make your people go out and demonstrate demonstrations, protests, I don't know, fire your politicians, they don't work like that in Russia. Russia is a cursed society in the moment and after the victory of Ukraine and its allies, we have to work and think a lot on how to return them back to life.
Hope you liked the weather if you <laughs> didn't like what I'm saying, but I hope you like both. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees. I will grab one right now. Thank you for becoming my patrons. Subscribe to my Instagram threads and Twitter. I'm pretty active there. We have a beautiful Discord community and also we have a very nice um, merch shop. The link to it is in the description of this video and our t-shirts, cups, stickers work well as conversation starters. And I will not be tired to repeat that Ukraine needs your attention, needs your conversations, but it is not just about Ukraine. This war of Putin is against the world, against the democratic world, against societies that value freedom and human life. That's why we have to stop him. Slava Ukraine!